Hey guys, welcome to episode number four of Passing Under Yellow. I'm your host, Gino Manley, with the young Ben Ali. Ben, say hello. Hello, viewers. So, have some pretty cool stuff. Uh, we got a little behind. I think we're like two weeks from the last one, um, but we've had some pretty cool stuff. Uh, but first off, I just want to say thank you to all the people. Like, I've been at uh, a couple different tracks. Uh, been to Road Atlanta last week. Before that, I was at NOLA with you. Uh, we were at Barbara with Jay Zilla, and it's uh, it's pretty cool that people actually come up and uh, you know say they're listening and uh, you know pretty uh, thankful that we're talking about you know some grassroots racing stuff. So um, just want to say thank you to everyone that's been listening, all two and three of you, however many there are. So um, but yeah, I want to jump into some cool stuff. So you know again, if you followed the last couple episodes, we we did a real light intro into kind of grassroots racing, how to get into it. Uh, we introduced you to our team and a great team to get started with, which would have been Open Throttle. Uh, who we've been racing with a lot lately. Um, so I want to kind of jump into, um, you know, again, when, when, when I had the idea to do this, um, you had just started, so you can kind of be a good test subject. So uh, we'll just jump right into NOLA Motorsports Park. That was your second uh, Champ Car Endurance Series start uh, with Open Throttle. So that was two weeks ago. So kind of walk us through. This was, this was good because your first one, you did some actual racing and then some night driving, and this one had some weather involved. So... Uh, why don't you do us a little recap of uh, NOLA for yourself, Ben? Yeah, a lot of first times uh, at this race and uh, significantly colder than VIR, that's for sure. But uh, NOLA was extremely fun. Uh, racing in the rain for the very first time was certainly a challenge. Um, and especially it being so cold out there <laughs> in the rain, <laughs> that wasn't super fun. And it was uh, it was my first race start. And so whenever we were loading up the vehicle and everything, uh, Mike just asked me at the beginning of the weekend he's like hey you want to start the race for the first time and i'm like yeah sure and he goes all right well how would you feel about also taking the checkers in the <laughs> same weekend and i was like man that would be so so much fun and uh the the very first race start was was super fun everyone was kind of like real bunched up and everything and it was almost kind of hard to tell when it was actually you know green flag because i was too far back in the pack to actually see the green flag and so just waiting for the radio call for it, you know, to for the green flag, that was pretty cool. And you just, you know, mash on the gas, you know, a little, a little more cautiously this time, especially being in the rain. But um, that was that was definitely fun for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, and and I think it's, um, you know, again, as far as driver development, you know, most people, you know, their first race, they generally don't start a race because, you know, the traffic at the height of the race at the beginning is is immense. You know, again, that's that's the the. The chance for instance is very high at the start of a race, so that to, that you got to experience that in the weather nonetheless. Um, I'll just call it like it is. I mean, it was your first time. You kind of struggled with it. I mean, you're in the weather, for sure, trying for sure. not to bump into people. So, uh, if you could do it again, would you change anything on your first start? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, I, I would be a lot more aggressive. It's it's funny. After uh, I did my stint in the rain, I immediately started looking up things. You know, like how I could be quicker in the rain. And one of the one of the points was that you know a lot of people harped on about you know racing in the rain faster is to just make the car do something. And so to almost try and drive a little bit over the limit so that you can kind of anticipate like, okay, you know, you're going to go into a corner and it's, you're going to kind of have it step out so you can be proactive about it. And, and so I was just extremely cautious because the car really felt like it was on ice. Like I locked up the brakes a bunch of times. And so the last thing I wanted to do is like my first race start, you know, plow into the back of somebody. So I, I played it with a little bit of caution, but by the end of my stint, I was a lot more comfortable. And well, and, and first time at NOLA, um, probably not one of my favorite tracks not ever. A, not a lot of elevation changes. Not a lot of elevation. I mean, again, it's a nice facility. I mean, it's just not, not I wouldn't make a trip out there for a race unless it was, <laughs> you know, unless it was very necessary. But um, all right. So first start in the rain. Um, how much practice time did you get on Friday? A whole lot or not a lot? A little bit. I, I was able to do um two two small stints on okay. on uh friday which was nice you just get a little bit familiar with the track and it's so funny because it's been so harped on that you just don't get test days and stuff but thankfully the the track actually hosted that yeah and you day. guys had had an add-on yeah because generally yeah. in champ car they're, they're you usually get a quick friday test day but you know again i think nola actually hosted that so um pretty cool there so okay so vir obviously first time this race um 
actual comfort and racecraft. Do you think you kind of improved at all or a little bit? So that, that was actually one thing I wanted to touch on is because on on Sunday it was the conditions were dry right. and I was significantly more comfortable and I found myself in a lot of positions to be able to pass people. And it was at that point I was like, wow, there is so much I have to learn about racecraft because there were cars that were in front of me that I was clearly faster than, but not by like a ton to where I could pass them on the straights. And so I was thinking, you know, several corners ahead, how can I pass this person? How can I set myself up? And so that's like another goal of mine is I want to try and like learn a lot about racecraft. So it was, it was a bit difficult. Yeah. I think, you know, again, that's, that's one thing that, you know, for those of you guys that are going to make the jump into uh, wheel to wheel, even if it's, you know, again, the, the smallest grassroots low, which is champ car WRL or something like that. You know, there's guys out there that, you know, again, as soon as they get out of the car, they're looking, well, my fastest lap was this, this, this. Okay, well, that's all great if you can go in there and do one quick lap. You know, again, I think that as drivers develop, they find that, you know, at least for me, it's taken a long time. You know, again, if I'm going to look at lap times, this overall consistency throughout the stint, you know, how much time do I have actually getting through traffic? Um, you know, because again, there's, there's people in those cars. And so even though you're fast, you have to have developed the racecraft to get around them. So, um, yeah, you know, that, that's just part of the education you're going to have is trying to develop ways and tactical ways, you know, without hitting people to get right. around cars and, um, you know, at the same time, you know, and keep up your pace and, 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 and work on that. Um, I was there, so I flew in, uh, that Sunday just to kind of see how everything was going. Um, and I got to see you take your first checker. So, um, in my experience and, you know, again, I think for most teams, you know, the honor to take the checkers is pretty big deal because you're responsible for protecting that car for the last two hours of the race. It's usually at its most worn condition. Mm -hmm. Um, if you are, you know, in the, in the chance to finish well, you don't want to, you know, put it in the wall, you know, the last two. So, um, first ever checker, just, uh, I'll give you a quick minute to kind of cover. I know it's very special. Even, even today when I, you know, when I get to finish a race and, you know, it's, it's still pretty cool to be the last one in the car and to take the checkers. It's extremely satisfying. And it, it, there's so much joy, especially when you, you know, take the checker and you look down pit lane and you see the entire team who worked extremely hard to make sure that the car made, made it to grid and, you know, get the car to the racetrack, work so hard and, you know, you know, put so much effort into it see them there cheering you on, you know, as you take the checkered, that was a, an incredible feeling. And just, you know, the car, you feel for the car because the car has been beat on for two days straight. And it's like, it, it's just very satisfying and joyful. I can't wait to take the checkers again. So just a little housekeeping. Um, you guys got there Friday and I hear you couldn't really unload for a second because there was a fugitive on the lease. Yeah. So we get to the track and like, 30 minutes after we get there, we're unloading. We're like putting up the little palm trees that we have outside our trailer. The track manager comes over and introduces herself. I can't remember her name. And she goes, by the way, there's a, there's a active manhunt going on right now. You may have noticed the helicopter that's circling. And, um, they, they, after, after the sun went down, they ended up finding them in the woods, not too far away from, from the, the track. track. <laughs> so that was, that was interesting. We were on the way there. We were talking about how New Orleans is kind of like the murder capital. <laughs> and 30 minutes after we get there, hey, there's a murderer on the loose. Be careful. Yeah. No, I, like I said, nice facility, great people. That's not really on my, on my uh, top five must go see in the United States tracks, but they did I, I can see why <laughs> they did host the IndyCar race, surprisingly enough. So that's kind of cool. But, I didn't know that. Out the uh, not that. not anymore, but um, yeah. So, so I raced earlier this year in WRL when they were in the midst of repaving it. So um, again, you know, it, it is a it is a nice facility once you get there. Yeah, we were surprised. It, it's very nice. The kart track looks super fun. I want to try and do the kart track. Yeah, no, that yeah. that is a good time over there. But good deal. All right, so you got to 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 do your second ever champ car race. You got to start a race in the rain. Mm -hmm. You got to actually finish the second second day uh how many people in your car there was three uh there was four of us four, four of us okay car. and and um you know good teamwork you think or yeah i mean i um it was yeah it, there was some teamwork involved for sure um because the thing is, is like with frankenstein the car that we drive that's mostly like some of the new renters and stuff yeah um, me and bradley were kind of the quick ones and so after that race mike was like hey why don't we put you in Kermit, maybe one of the, the faster, faster cars. cars. Okay, good. So it's kind of exciting. Well, you know, I mean, and, and that's the whole idea of that car was to develop guys, get them and, you know, get them a couple of races in and then maybe move them up to the faster car. So, yeah. um, cool deal. All right. So, you know, again, I want to talk about, um, 
I had a little bit of a fun weekend uh, most recently. So the you we had all four cars there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this year we had planned to run uh, the NASA 25 Hours of Thunder Hill and the E46. And just unfortunately it wasn't ready. It's a new car build. So we didn't have the cage done in time. So uh, this was going to be the same weekend as uh, the WRL race, the season ender at Coda. And uh, myself and Bradley were going to take some of the guys and go to Thunder Hill. And then the rest of the team was going to go to... Uh, obviously code and go to Austin. So the car wasn't ready. So that kind of left me with a free weekend because we had, we had sold all the seats in the, in the M3. So, um, I didn't feel like flying out there to just watch. So, um, I said, Mike, I'm going to take, uh, take one of the cars. And I, if coincidentally, just the past three or four years, NASA runs Santa run at road Atlanta, which is kind of like my home track because obviously I'm in Atlanta so much. So, um, I actually got to do a lot of people were surprised by this, including myself, my first ever, uh, club race weekend. So, you know, again, I've yeah. done tons of endurance stuff. Um, I mean, I raced NASA before, obviously, last year at, at the at Thunder Hill and then done some Trek stuff and done a bunch of Ds, but never actually did a club race. So I took uh, Specs, who wasn't touched ever since NOLA, since the, the two weekends before. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And, um, you know, we I went with the intention of running in time trials um, just for fun and, and to hang out with some friends there. When I got there, I was sold on running an ST, so uh, I ran an ST6, uh, which wasn't a big fuel. I had a handful of cars. So, um, you know, for those of you guys that are listening, again, the premise of this show is always going to be talking about grassroots endurance racing, your champ cars, your WRLs. Um, but I think it's worth noting that, you know, again, the the NASA paddock, a lot of, you know, it's a, it's a huge community. Um, it's one that, you know, again, I, I've run a bunch of Ds, like I said before. Um, but to actually get to run and do a, you know, a sprint race uh, this weekend at, at the Santa Run was was pretty educational for me. I mean, obviously, I've done some some pretty high level racing stuff, um, but to get together and w- operate, just worry about Gino uh, for like 15, 20 minutes at a time. It, it was a little different because I'm so used to starting a race and, you know, again, I settle in the car and I have one whole hour to, you know, kind of pick people off. Well, here I've got like 10 minutes to like get to the front. Um, so it was a cool, um, transition for me. Um, but the, at the same time, kind of the reason I went out there is also educational now that we've had, uh, we have specs, a 645 car tech, you know, again, that's a car that a lot of people like yourself, if you wanted to, you can go out there, um, and actually get your NASA comp license next year. So, um, just like, you know, a, a, a couple thoughts for people that, uh, want to get their license. I think NASA is a great way to do it. Um, you can go from, you know, DE1, up through DE4 and then do a comp school. Um, and again, I, I was really impressed. It was great racing. It was, it was super cheap. I think the weekend was like 500 bucks. Um, I, I filled the Miata up when I got there Friday and it's still half a tank after doing like three races in it. So, <laughs> so no, you know, again, it, it was, um, a different, you know, again, a, a different vibe, not being an endurance weekend, not having, you know, a bunch of teammates in there, but you know, again, it, it for, for those of you guys that are on a budget, you know, for 500 bucks, it, that car could technically run SM if we put SS looks on it. Um, you know, I thought it was, you know, pretty, pretty neat. Um, one cool thing, though, um, and I'll, I'll talk to you about this because you, you have some involvement in this. So I decided to tow my car up there um, <laughs> with my Ford Crown Vic. Um, again, a lot of people who follow me know about this car, but I towed it up there on a, on a double axle car hauler. It's about probably a 2,000 pound trailer with the car. Um, but here's why, because how many times when you got into this, people were like, oh, you need to tell your car, you need to go buy an F-250 or they say something yep, yep. asinine on, on the website or on these gotta, forums. Gotta have a truck, need to have like an F-350 diesel. Yeah, I know. It's like guys are towing a car, you know? So yeah. I kind of did it just as, um, A, because why not? And B, just to kind of like show people, hey, you don't really need to have, you know, this fancy, you know, new truck to do. I, I always laugh when people go out and buy a new truck to tow there a one car. Now, if you're towing a, you know, a 40 foot enclosed trailer or a big enclosed trailer, I, I can understand that you want to have a bigger truck. But, uh, when people just get in this, they go look for like a huge truck to tow their one car. And we kind of proved that, uh, you had it to come. It did just fine. Yeah. It, you, know? It, you know, it was struggling. It I, was struggling, but I, it, it made it work. You it know, did. I loved that truck and it was great, but yeah. it just, and then you found a truck that had yeah. more suited your needs better. But you know, for those of you guys are getting in there. So, it opens up uh, my next talking point, which is the internet. <laughs> the internet is a terrible place to learn about. It's a great place to learn about racing, and it's a terrible place to learn about racing, particularly some of these forums where just some of the weirdest 
most false, baseless information that you can be that you can refer to, particularly in in car forms. So people tell you how to prep cars. So, you know, again, not to say I'm an expert in racing, but um, I'm sure you, as you've progressed, and in, in, there is some dumb shit that's said on the internet. Oh, there's there's some bullshit. Like sometimes you really gotta bite your tongue when you're on Facebook and you just see people commenting asinine things. It's like, where did you make this shit up? So I want to talk about this a little bit, and it's kind of touchy because, again, this is a show on the internet that people are watching. So everything that we talk about is generally things that we've learned from experience. Um, again, I, I've been doing this. God, I'm getting old. I've been you know, involved in amateur racing for 10 years. Uh, you've been involved a couple of years now. Um, and I remember when you first got, I was like, Ben, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. Yep. Because if you believe everything you read on the internet, you'd be out there on your first track day on power stop breaks, you know, just, just weird, you know, again, EBC uh, pads. Yeah. <laughs> weird, weird, you know, recommendations. So, um, to those of you guys at home that actually do this, I still think that if you want to get into racing, talk to racing people, uh, whether it's something as, as ridiculous as trying to buy a tow vehicle for your first track car. Um, or get a seat. If you listen to everything online, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty active on Instagram, and it's always pretty cool when I post a video of, hey, you know, here's how the Nurburgring went, and somebody who's never been to the Nurburgring, who's probably never driven a race car, you know, messages me, says, here's how you should be faster, and it's like, well, what the hell have you done, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, so the internet's kind of a, is not the greatest place for a lot of your racing advice, um, and again, the reason why I brought this up in this episode is, you know, again, when, when I was at the NASA weekend, um, I was surrounded by people that I've been around the, in my entire, the entirety of my racing. And so it was really cool to kind of reconnect with a lot of people that, um, I used to race with and kind of got away from. Um, and, and just, you know, again, I had never raced in, in, in a club race and a lot of the guys came over with me. I was like, Hey, you know, you need to take this out of your car. Here's how you say wait. And so like the notebook I got from that, of like really good information, even though I've been doing this a long time, going to that, going into the paddock and getting information was, you know, way better than what I could have got. Um, from actually going online and, and reading a bunch of this stuff. Um, but yeah, forums are deadly places. They're, they're horrible. And it's also, the, it's cool you bring that up because it also just shows how nice everybody is in this community and how willing they are to help like one another. Yeah. Even though like it could be direct competitors and stuff, we all want good competition and we want to help each other. And I love that com- this community. Yeah, you know, and so, so I raced in ST because when I brought the car, I didn't bring any slicks with me. Like there was friends that were like, hey, just go, go. I have an extra set. Go mount them up so you can race in the SM. You right. know? So uh, just, just pretty cool there. But yeah, be careful what you're going on the internet. I was reminded of that this weekend because just a lot of good information that came out of there um moving on a little bit um i do want to talk about um we we touched on it earlier but now that that car has been nasa teched um again if you guys are in de4 reach out to mike uh, or myself because um that car can be run at a comp school next year so i think nasa does them like at roebling uh, i know they definitely do them at road atlanta and so if you have a de you know, if you're a de4 guy and you do want to move on and you don't have a race car yet um reach out to one of us and uh, we can get you set up to bring the car out there um, you know, run your, your mock races, you know, do all the, the, the exercises you need to get, you know, your license that weekend. Um, and, and more so too, let's say you want to consider getting an NA, you know, spec style of Miata, um, to go racing with, you get to try that out. So, um, first race car selection is kind of a, you know, again, that's a, that's a big decision you're going to make. And so a lot of people will buy a race car and then go get their license and find out they hate their race car. So now they have their license, but a, car, a race car they hate. So, you know, maybe consider switching that up a little bit and, you know, renting a car, get your license, and then you can kind of decide, hey, what kind of style of racing do I want to do? Um, and even more so, you know, kind of talking about, you know, again, just do I want to race a front-wheel drive car, rear-wheel drive car? Do I want to do more champ stuff? Do I want to do NASA? So um, reach out to one of us if you are kind of in that market for getting your comp license next year because now we have a car that's teched. And I think it'd be, a, you know, it's a perfect car to – to do anything with as far as the comp schools. So um, next for you, I think, is Sebring. Yep, we're going to do the 10-and-a-half-hour race at Sebring. That's going to be the year-ender. It's going to be the 30th and 31st, I believe. And so I think you're going to be doing it in my car. Is that the plan? Yeah, I, I, I'm really not sure. Uh, uh, the champ car registration says Kermit. There was talk of maybe the E46 if it was ready, so I'm not 100% sure. So yeah, I've got a ride though. Well, that, that that's positive. So you know, again, have, you have never done Sebring. Never done Sebring, only on Forza. So I'm extremely excited to do Sebring. So Sebring's gonna be a, a lot of fun. Um, that should be the debut of the ZHP. Uh, yeah. Whenever we get it out there, so I'm looking forward to driving my old street car that's now turned the race car. 
I think myself and Mike and Bradley and a lot of the guys that kind of have contributed to the team, we're going to take that car out just to kind of shake it down, have a good time. And then at the same time, conduct the business of racing me out as an enchant car. Yep. Um, but, you know, I, I think, too, that's my hope for you is that you get to drive that car next year because it's going to be a little bit faster. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, it just goes back to, you know, again, the, the core things that you've done your first two races, which I think are important for people that want to get into racing, um, do this more as, you know, you've identified, hey, I can do this. Right. You know, again, you're, you're comfortable in the car. Um, you've identified that, you know, again, the race craft is very, very important. Extremely. Way more so than lap times. Yeah. I mean, again, now, granted, you don't want to be out there and be slow. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, again, it's 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 the faster guys don't have as much time bleed, you know, when they're when they're navigating traffic. And that means getting past or making passes. Right. You know, so I don't know if you've worked on that at all. You know, again, it's a lot of new guys drive so much out of their mirrors that, you know, again, they're losing like three seconds per position because they're like laying point. You know, they, they get track day minded to be courteous and to point people by. Right. Versus in the racing situation, it's kind of like, no, I mean, I'll get you by, you know, again, I'll help you out. But. I'm not going to slow down to let you by. Yeah, if you're faster, make the pass. Yeah, you know, again, it, it's it, on it's on them. And you've and you figured this out a little bit. So, um, but yeah, I, I hope that you get to do the E46, you know, next year and, and kind of, you know, increase your uh, driving ability. So, you know, we'll get to follow that journey a little bit. Um, in between these two, I, do, I think, think we need to jump in there. So NOLA ended mm -hmm. and you got, including myself, we went straight from there to Monday to Jay Zilla, which was at Barber. That was awesome. Me and me and Bradley, we took two uh, of the cars. We took two of the cars. Like on, I think on Friday, we were like, you know what? If this weekend goes good, what if we just went straight to Alabama and went to the Jay Zilla day? And I called my employer and I was like, hey, can you think I could get the Monday off? Well, like I said, I flew to NOLA with the intention of, hey, checking with the team, making sure everything went well, kind of watching you race. And then I jetted straight to Barber because that was our last Jay Zilla Barber day, which was on a Monday, strangely enough, before Thanksgiving. Yep. Um, but yeah, you got to drive the Miatas there. I know me and you had done a track day there before, but any thoughts on driving? Uh, obviously, we put you in advance now that you've done wheel to wheel. So yep. um, any thoughts on, on, on Barber as far as way more enjoyable than Nola? Oh, my God. Barber is that's still that's my favorite racetrack. Then the track day that we did, it was on the verge of snowing and it was still extremely fun. But being able to drive this track extremely hard was so fun. And especially I got to drive it in Kermit and Specs. Yeah. And they're they're equally as fast as Frankenstein, but they just they feel a little bit smooth. They're a little more comfortable to drive, but uh, Barber is just such an extremely fun track to drive. I can't wait to drive that track again. Yeah, so now it was a uh, cool weekend. I think I caught, so I got to drive the uh, TCR again just for, we're doing some media stuff, and yep. I think I caught you and Bradley. Yep. So that was pretty cool. You got to be passed by the Audi, so uh -huh. kind of neat. I got passed by a... Um, oh, the, the cup car was out yeah, there. Yeah, the cup of the 911, that was incredible cool. Yeah, was no, like, that's... It's a weekend. So, you know... The I was out there because at the same weekend, um, MCOR, which is a new uh, series coming out, they were doing a media day, and yep. and my out and my old Audi was there, and then we had a G uh, 992 Cup car, and then a M2 CSR that we were doing some media stuff with. So um, obviously, I kind of snuck out and took the Audi out for some laps, but um, no, pretty cool. I mean, again, that's a it goes to show you right now for for people that are looking to get into racing. Um, we just talked about like 10 different organizations just in this conversation, but yeah. you know, again, in, in 23, um, you know, again, I intend to race, obviously racing champ car, racing WRL, um, you know, probably do something with MCOR, which would be a new series. Um, you know, definitely we'll go back and, you know, and do probably, uh, I'm gonna try to do some lucky dog stuff in the West coast. So and there's a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of places to take your, your racing. Uh, NASA was one of them. Um, there's some SCCA stuff. Um, there's a mountain that I want to try to climb maybe, you know, <laughs> so, so there's a, there's a, for those of you guys that are looking to do this, especially track day guys, again, there's just the, the, the sky's the limit for where you want to go. And, and, and we'll down the road, we'll talk a little bit more about kind of where you can take your cars and where you can take your time and your money. And we'll maybe do a little more in depth stuff on each individual series. Um, but just right now you can Google all these series and, and kind of figure out, you know, what's going to work for you, whether it's going to be an arrive and drive situation or you already have a car. Um, but that's part of the education that, you know, again, uh, I learned again this weekend, just running a club race with NASA. I learned a lot and, uh, you know, again, I'll try to do some other series in 23 to kind of get some more of that, you know, education out there. But, 
Um, did you have anything on your on your uh, agenda that you wanted to go over? No, we pretty much hit on everything. I think uh, we on one of the previous episodes we had talked about you know my goals, and I think my goals are you know changing as well. There's there's two things on it is I want to learn you know everything I can about racecraft. You know, obviously getting behind the wheel is one of the best ways to do it. But I've been watching a lot of film, a lot of videos and stuff, and just seeing what other people do and how they set themselves up to pass. So I think another one of my goals that I'm creating is to just get as good at, you know, race craft as I can. The other thing is to any opportunity I get to, to drive a race in the <laughs> rain, I'm going to do it because I don't ever want to be one of those guys who's scared to race in the rain or, you know, gets nervous and stuff. It's something that I really want to try to master. And thankfully in Florida, it rains a lot. So. Well, you know, I mean, it's, yes. I mean, the more seat time you get, like we talked about, the better off you're going to be. Yeah. You want to be in a car as much as you can, you know, and, and, and even me is as, as much driving as I have done, you know, again, getting the drive, uh, you know, again, like you might want to get with Wilmot, you know, and, yeah. and hire him for a session because, you know, again, I, I'm a pretty, you know, decent amateur, I feel like. But when I get with a pro guy like a Wilmot or I saw Pinkerton break the Miata record this weekend, when I get to be around those guys and pick their brain as far as, you know, car control and things like that, it shows me how far behind I am. Yeah. Um, you know, again, it, it's. It's always shocking. I have a hard time, you know, again, even with, you know, like, when we're driving the M3 or whatever, um, you know, you've, you've, you've been on cruise with me. I very rarely ask for changes on cars. Yeah. Um, you never, ever see me say, well, let's take a big swing at the suspension or let's do this because I don't even feel like I'm driving the car enough. So, you know, again, if so, for me to ask the, you know, again, I don't deserve to ask the crew to you know, overhaul the car if I'm not getting everything I can out of it. Yeah. You know, so a good marker for me is, you know, again, if, if I say that's all I can get and then someone like Pat gets in the car and he's a second quicker, well, obviously I need to do some work on myself before I ask the crew guys to go, you know, redo a car. So um, I think it's things like that you'll learn that, hey, are you getting everything out of this car that you can uh, versus the other drivers that, you know, again, just, just things like that, the more and more seat time you get, the more you can identify that type of stuff. So, um, yeah, and, and in the rain driving too, I think you got to just do it more, you know, yeah. again, I got to race in the rain this weekend and it was a good reminder of, you know, how important good rain tires are and not yeah. the two race old hand cooks that were on there, <laughs> but, but we made it work. Um, you know, and so just, yeah, man, I agree. You got to just get out there and, um, you know, those of you guys that are listening again, just like, like Ben said, you got to take every opportunity you can to do a, a rain track day. Mm hmm I remember in the past, like if it looked like it was raining at the firm, we would like on purposely yeah. go out there and say, man, it's rain. We can't miss it. You loved going out there. You yeah. had to be drifting in the Enterprise rentals, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, I mean, I, I feel like I learned more about driving in the rain, driving Enterprise rental cars in the rain mm -hmm. at, on a track just because they're so bad. Yeah. And so it's like I'm anticipating that this car is going to, you know, have an issue. And when it happens, like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. So that, it helped, you know, tremendously, I think, in my, in my rain confidence, um, you know, as far as out there. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, again, good for you, man. You got to do two races this year. Hopefully do a third before we close it out. So, yeah. um, you know, again, you're living the track day to racing dream and, and, and we're using you as a test subject, uh, at least Mike and I are to, to see how, how we can develop the program. Fine by me. Um, we'd be remiss to say, uh, before we end this, thank you to our sponsors, which would be Hawk Performance and obviously Mike Gorman, Open Throttle Track Days and Open Throttle Racing. If you guys didn't watch the last episode, you definitely should. Uh, like, subscribe, and share as we bring more and more content for you track day guys that want to make the transition into wheel wheel racing. Obviously, we got Ben doing it, you know, live with us as as he's doing his journey. Um, and yeah, we'll continue to bring more uh, helpful information from other series and and things like that. But thank you guys to everyone that really has supported with us. Um, we will start doing some Q and A's. I think we decide in the next episode. So yeah. if you have any pressing questions, uh, you can reach out to me on Instagram or Ben or any of us uh, through Facebook. And I'll be happy to answer them. But yeah, um, I guess what's this weekend? Jay Zill at AMP. That's the last. It's it's kind of sad when it's the end of the year. All the events are kind of winding down. So I think that's the last one for me is going to be AMP this weekend. So um, to all you Jay Zilla guys that have been following us too, um, I hope to get more of you guys onto the racing scene next year with me and Ben and, and Open Throttle. So we'll see you guys in episode number five.